Hi, uh, today rather than doing a tutorial like we usually do, we're going to show you a bit of information around um, disk capacities, uh, sort of advertised size, what the NAS will actually see, um, the space you'll get available after you create different RAIDs with different capacities of drives. Um, so the NAS I've got here is a TVS-H1288X. Currently I've got it running on Hero, um, but I, after I've done everything here on Hero, I'm going to swap to QTS as well. Um, so just take a break and swap over, and then we'll do the exact same thing with the same hardware on QTS. Um, as QUTS Hero uses the ZFS file system and QTS uses the EXT4 file system, there are some small differences, so I just want to make sure I'm covering all bases so that whatever NAS you've got, it would be the same. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is show you how I've got this uh, NAS configured here in the Storage and Snapshots application. Uh, the first area I'm going to go to is Disks. Um, to show you the different disk sizes. Now at the top I do have some SSDs in, but I'm going to ignore them for now. I'm going to do this all on the hard drives. Um, so in drive bays 1 through 4 of the 3.5 inch drive bays, the bigger ones, um, I've got four 20 terabyte WD Red Plus drives. Um, and a small clue as to what I'm trying to get across here is that they're 20 terabyte drives, yet our capacity is reporting here uh, as 18.19. Same with the uh, Seagates I've got in base 5 and 6. Uh, there's some Seagate Ironwolf Pros. They're 12 terabytes, showing as 10.91. And I've got some Toshibas in base 7 and 8, uh, which are uh, 10 terabyte drives, showing as 9.1. Um, so whatever the label says on the front of the drive that you've got, if, if you want to know what the capacity is of your drives or drives you're thinking about getting, um, the, the rough thing to do is take the number on the label. So if it's a 4 terabyte drive, you divide it by 1.1. Uh, so that would give you about 3.64. Um, so that's going to be how you get the number. It's, it translates to every drive uh, size, whether it's SSD, hard drive, doesn't matter. Uh, if you divide it by 1.1, it takes what the drive makers advertise um, and converts it into binary what the uh, drive will use. Uh, if I click one of the drives, uh, we do sort of try to explain it down here in the information of the drive. So here, if you hover over the drive disk capacity, it says 18.19 terabytes, brackets 20. And there is a little information bubble that pops out, just letting you know uh, that the decimal notation is used by the disk manufacturers um, and the binary notation is what's used by most operating systems, including ours. So that's where the difference comes from. Um, we do often get a, a few customers saying, oh, there's a lot less capacity than I was thinking from something they've they've set up. So if you use a the biggest drive available today, I think it's a 22 terabyte drive. If you divide that by 1.1, it gives you a nice square 20 terabytes available. So we've not taken those two terabytes per drive away from you. It's just the way that the decimal advertising um, is sort of of the drive makers is changing to what the operating system will use. Um, so what I'm going to do on the four WD drives, I'm going to create a RAID 5. On the two Seagates and the two Toshibas, separately I'm going to create uh, two two-drive RAID 1s on each of those, just to give you a, a representation of different capacities with different RAIDs, uh, different things. Now I do already have one storage pool on this NAS, um, it's just QUTS Hero, needs a system volume. Um, right now that's just running on the SSDs, which I'm not paying attention to, so we can ignore any numbers up there for now. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go create a new storage pool click next um, and I'm going to pick just the WD drives here so I'm not going to pick um, the SSDs at the top I'm just going to pick the hard drives which is the four WD 20 terabytes uh, it's also selected RAID 5 which I'm happy with so I'll leave it there and already it's giving me a clue as to the capacity so it's saying 52.50 terabytes is what it's estimating we're going to have uh, now, if you do four times 20, you know, the drives you paid for, you bought, um, that's 80 terabytes. It's, it's obviously quite a lot less than the 80 terabytes you perhaps thought you were getting. Um, obviously, we've lost a little bit just by the, doing the decimal to um, uh, binary conversion for the operating system. Um, but also with RAID 5, um, you've got uh, tolerance from a drive failing. So you've got some redundancy in there. So we're going to lose some space for that protection as well. Um, now, this isn't the end number on the next screen when we'll get to that there are other things that can affect the final number. So we can see already just by going from this first screen, it telling us 52.50 terabytes. When you click next, that number's immediately dropped quite significantly, nearly another 15 terabytes there. Um, so that's 
a lot of space that's now gone. So what's done that is the space allocation here. So you can do things like pool over provisioning. Um, little explanation bubble there for anybody that wants to know what that is. So that's something that you can enable if you want to. Um, so for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to set every um, pool up the same um, in terms of the space allocation settings. Um, just for the video, I'm unticking optimized performance. I don't recommend you do it. Um, if you're going to be setting up a live NAS, definitely keep that enabled. It just takes a while, and I'm going to be resetting this NAS to switch it to QTS in a minute, so I don't need that. So in the interest of speed, I'm going to untick that. Um, and I'm also going to untick pool over provisioning and pool guaranteed snapshot space. Um, if you need to use um, snapshots and you want some guaranteed space, by all means enable it. There are different options you can do that use less space. You can move that number around if you want to. Um, you can also enable and disable this later if you need to. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to have them all set up exactly the same. Click Next and click Create. Okay. So we'll let that go off and uh, create that one, and then we'll create the next one. Okay, so we can see that that one's ready. So this was the four WD 20 terabyte drives, and we can see we've got 52.63 terabytes of available space from that. Um, and we can see that the uh, percent use bar here is pretty much all gray the whole way along. So very small bit used for a small amount of data needed for the, the creation, but um, a lot of space. Um, one example I'd like to show you is on the top storage pool there, which I did on the SSDs. You see there's an area in yellow, that's the pool over provisioning. So when I set that up, I did let it do some pool over provisioning. Um, and you can also go in there and set up things like um, guaranteed snapshot space if you want to. Um, so you can turn these things on at any time. So configure pool guaranteed snapshot space. I can tick that. Let's say I'll do the 20% um, and I can apply that. And we can see up there now that it's actually using some extra space now for um, the guaranteed snapshot um, area. So if I was to turn on snapshots, I'd have that available. So you can change the amount of unallocated space just by moving um, some settings around if you need to. Um, but that's showing that I've got a full 52.63 terabytes available to give to a volume if I want to. Uh, so now I'll move on to the next drives, which I think were the Seagates. Um, so yeah, we've got the two Seagates here. So these were Seagate 12 terabytes. So I can't choose RAID 5 here because it's only two disks. You need at least three for that. So I'm going to let it do RAID 1. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to untick Optimize Performance again, untick Pool Over Provisioning and uh, Guaranteed Snapshot Space. And then I'm going to click Next and Create. So we'll let this one go off and create that and we'll see the actual final amount of space that we get from um, the two uh, 12 terabyte drives there in a RAID, so there we go. So that's giving me 10.56 terabytes available. And finally, we'll create one on the Toshiba 10 terabytes. So we see those two there at the bottom. So we're gonna tick those. Again, RAID 1, showing 8.81 terabytes. Let's click OK. So here we see options here for pool over provisioning and enable guarantee snapshot space. So I'm gonna untick all these and click next. So we can see 8.78 terabytes. We'll click create. Okay, so we can see there that we've now got um, the four 20 terabyte drives are giving us 52.63 in a RAID 5. The two 12 terabytes are giving us 10.56 terabytes in a RAID 1. And the two 10 terabytes are giving us 8.81 terabytes um, also in a RAID 1. Um, so that's the sort of raw capacity that you're going to get um, where the only thing you've really configured is the redundancy. You've not added any snapshot guaranteed space or any over provisioning. Um, obviously, if you do enable those numbers, we, we give you a prediction of what those spaces will be used by, uh, how much space were taken away for those features. Um, and again, if you've made a mistake and turn those features on or maybe didn't turn them on and want them on later, those are things that you can go and edit later by editing the storage pool. Um, so that's how we've set this one up. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'll just pause the video for a quick second. So in the magic of video editing, we'll come back. We'll be in pretty much the same space as when we were at the start of the video here, except the NAS will be on QTS. Um, so we'll continue on from there, and uh, I'll just get, get busy now swapping the NAS over from uh, QUTS Hero to QTS.
Okay, so we're back with the uh, the NAS now. Um, all I've done is convert it to from QUTS Hero to QTS. Uh, so I haven't changed uh, any of the hardware. Everything's the same. Still the four WDs, uh, two Seagates, two Toshibas. Um, so now if I click over to the uh, storage and snapshot screen, um, I've got the same storage pool one uh, with um, the system volume uh, like I had over on QUTS Hero. I did that just on the uh, uh, SSDs. So that's going to leave all the hard drives free. Now there are some subtle differences between QTS and QUTS Hero. Um, so when I click create new storage pool, it gives me an extra screen here asking if I want things like QT or anything like that. The QT is only available on QTS, not QUTS Hero, but there's some different options. I'm going to leave them disabled. I'm going to click next. Uh, so now I can see all the disks that I've got. So I want the four WD disks. So I can see their manufacturer WD. Uh, so I'm going to click into those. Take those four disks, let's have a look. So four disks, so SATA hard drives one, two, three, and four, so that's what I want. Um, now it's giving me an estimated capacity down here of 54.54 currently. I've got RAID 5 selected, um, which is what I had selected uh, on QUTS Hero. We'll click next. There we go. Now we get the option here to enable pool guaranteed snapshot space. I'm going to untick that just like I did before. Um, so we're going to click next so we can see the full capacity available for a volume. Um, summary, very happy with all that. Uh, going to click OK. Um, now one difference between QUTS Hero and QTS is we're not likely to see uh, the status uh, go to a green tick during this uh, thing saying ready. Um, RAID 5 setups, uh, redundant RAID setups on uh, QTS uh, do go through an initialization process, uh, checking the parity, making sure everything's okay. Um, something that uh, ZFS doesn't have to do. It's just built a little bit differently. Um, it's pretty much ready to go straight away. Um, things do take a little bit longer on QTS. Uh, but it is going to show us the, the, the number, uh, the capacity available here. Um, so we'll go through this. We'll just let this go off and create this RAID 5 on the 4WD uh, 20 terabyte drives. And we'll see what space we've got left. Uh, once we've created all of them, we'll go and do a little comparison between uh, QUTS Hero and QTS, just so we can see all the numbers in one screen. Okay, so we can see that that's uh, created, it says ready and synchronizing, so we're going to see that synchronizing the whole way through this. It's asking me if I want to create a new volume. Um, I'm going to say no for now. I didn't do it on QETS Hero, so I'm just going to leave it empty. But we can see there we've got 54.54 terabytes available um, on the uh, QTS setup there, so that's good. Um, now we're going to go create another new storage pool. Again, leave those disabled. Um, this time we're going to pick the two Seagate options here, so Seagate Seagate, it's auto selected RAID 1, which is exactly what we did on the QUTS Hero, saying I'm going to get 10.90. Um, so let's see what happens when we go through. I'm going to untick uh, pool guaranteed snapshot space, um, and then I'm going to create that one. So we'll let this one get created um, alongside storage pool 2 that we already did there. Okay, so we can see that one's done. Uh, again, say no to the volume for now. Um, that's given us 10.90, and we'll create the last one now. So again, new storage pool, next. This time we're gonna pick the two Toshiba 10 terabyte ones. Again, selecting RAID 1. It's saying we're gonna have 9.09 .09 terabytes. Let's see what we get. Untick pool guaranteed snapshot space, and we'll create that one as well. Okay, and now we see that one has 9.09 .09 terabytes. Um, so let me just go add all these numbers into a, a little table and then we can talk about the differences. So with the final summary here, um, with the four uh, WD Red Plus, um, they were 20 terabytes um, advertised, 18.19 seen by uh, the operating system using RAID 5. Um, with QUTS Hero, we got 52.53 terabytes. Uh, but with QTS, we got a bit more, 54.54 terabytes, uh, a little bit less overhead um, with uh, EXT4 than with um, uh, than with ZFS. So we'll see that trend across all the capacities. Um, with the two Sega Wolf Pros in a RAID 1, advertised at 12 terabytes, 10.91 terabytes seen by the OS. Um, so QUTS Hero, 10.56 with QTS, a little bit more at 10.9. 
Um, the Toshiba MG06s, we had two of those in a RAID 1, um, advertised at 10 terabytes, usable was 9.1 with the decimal to binary conversion. Uh, QUTS Hero was seeing 8.81 terabytes usable, and QTS had 9.09 terabytes. Um, so really just an informational video. Hopefully uh, that helps people sort of size how many drives they'll need at what capacity, um, especially depending on the operating system they choose and RAID mode they want to go for. Um, so we tried to cover a, a few different ranges here of different RAID modes, different uh, drive sizes uh, with the different operating systems. Um, so if, if anybody has any questions or any comments, uh, please do let us know down below We'll uh, in the comments section. We'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, hopefully you found that, that quite useful. There was um, a, a lot of different moving parts there getting that set up, but um, hopefully just a, a good bit of information there um, so that people can size their, uh, their units correctly. Uh, and hopefully if, if you're worried that you haven't got the capacity you thought you were getting, it might be that something like uh, guaranteed snapshot space was enabled or you had the drive over provisioning set quite high. Um, again, you can adjust those settings to, to get the space back if you need to. Um, again, any questions, let us know. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.